Welcome everybody to the short uh, part of the talk. So, uh, okay, let me, let me I, I, I will need to spend some time uh, for um, formulas, but it will be a uh, very small one. So there's some, some JIT formula is used, but um, we we'll try to make it, uh, to, uh, to reduce it to minimum. Okay, so let me just uh, recall some basic things. So consider the JIT bundle of uh, functions. Uh, so points are L jets of the functions on manifold M. Um, so if interesting in uh, like system later, then can, can change the, to, to take vector space or more generally rank M bundle over M and then talk about jets of sections. And um, choice of coordinates X on M, well, X1 to XD, uh, leads to coordinates on jet space. Uh, where these are base coordinates and this will be kind of coefficients of Taylor expansion or uh, partial derivatives corresponding to point. Uh, so, so this will be coordinates of jets of JLM points in general. So alpha is multi-index, uh, non-negative numbers uh, uh, D2, where D is dimension of a manifold M. Um, and um, it's important to note that uh, a projection from L jet to L minus one jet is a fine bundle modeled on L-symmetric power of cotangent space. And this uh, actually makes it possible to, uh, to think of them as uh, polynomials uh, on here. Um, now, when we go to uh, infinite jet bundles, so basically you take finite jet bundles in jail and go to projective limit because you have projection from K infinity to jail. When you think about functions, so errors uh, are turned and the space of functions are in, injected into one other and you go to injective limit and that's what are functions on jet spaces. So in other words, it tells us function on infinite jet space is just function on some finite but unrestricted uh, jet order. Okay, and uh, the, the good story about infinite jet space is that it has canonical flat connection. That's also called Cartan distribution. And um, here is description. So we would like to do a horizontal lift, a vector field on the base on M, two vector field on the um, infinite. And this is for twice as follows. So if you take some function on infinite and if you take uh, a function on, um, on, on base, right? Then we can do the following. Differentiation of function on jets um, along this lifted field, evaluate it at the infinite jet of u, that's point of j infinity, is the same as we first restrict the function of just on the graph of this section, then it becomes function on the base, and then we differentiate it on the base. Okay, so in, uh, that, that's called dx horizontal field. Okay, so, 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 so this arbitrary points of j infinity, so if you're able to define it, so we know what it means to differentiate functions, therefore we have derivation. In local coordinates, if xi coordinates, right, and the del i are uh, partial derivative by xi and ai are coefficients, so that's summation, right, if there's execution of x, then the lift to infinite jet is the following. So the summation where here are total derivatives, right, you have this summation, so here alpha is arbitrary multi index. Okay, so um, now, um, Uh, the next thing I'd like to talk about is symbols. Uh, and um, uh, a scalar differential operator of order at most L, uh, that's not necessarily a linear differential operator. Uh, so that's just a function, a function on the jet space of, of order L. Okay, and um, well, of course, well, these are embedded into functions on G-infinity, so, so you just specify to, to, to on which order this function is supported, right? Because every function has only finitely many arguments. And it defines PDS system, right? You just take the locus of this, and it's some manifold in GLM, but then you can do prolongation. Finite, for example, you can differentiate this, 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 uh, this one or several uh, defining functions once, and then you will get some manifold in GL plus one, or you can differentiate them uh, any number of times, and that's compose with uh, horizontal derivatives. Uh, well, that's d alpha, it's iterated. Then you get some manifolds in g infinity. Now, if you take this function f, well, 
on on jet space. Uh, here I don't specify actually. I just roll G infinity, but can be can be take smaller. Um, uh, can take actually jail. And I differentiate it, so I get one four. Okay, on the space of jets. And I'd like to restrict it to vertical, right? Because G infinity is restricted to base as canonical notion of vertical there. It's even also horizontal, as I said, but now I look to vertical. And then uh, restriction to vertical will be actually, uh, this DF will be a uh, polynomial on both up a uh, cotangent space. And it will go to the same order as function f, so it will be uh, can be decomposed in homogeneous parts, right? So uh, uh, f zero will be uh, homogeneity zero, so it's as zero uh, symmetric part zero and then symmetric part one and so forth. Okay, and this part can be described as follows. So, so in coordinates is just I differentiate f by uh, u alpha, right? And here is iterated partial derivative u alpha. Uh, so that's homogene homogeneous. So weight of alpha is j alpha is multi index. Okay, and that section of uh, symmetric power now of tension bundle, right? Because it's functional cotangent. So 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 that's uh, symmetric uh, power of tension bundle pulled up, of course, to j. Um, now. Um, uh, well, I, I talk about scalar case here. Here's just one function u with different alpha, but if there are more functions u, then you have to put uh, upper coordinates j as well. So, so I, I just was willing to be a bit uh, sim more simple. Now, uh, if you think about how this thing change when you change coordinates, then actually lower uh, the, uh, lower degree part uh, don't behave regularly, but the top degree part is actually tensorial. And that's called sim. Um, moreover, it's coordinate independent, right? So, so it's called order, uh, symbol of f or order l symbol of f, but lower order symbols of f are actually not tensorial. They are some sort of connections and other more complicated uh, um, uh, differential stuff. And indeed, in the point of E, it even is independent on the structure of jets because we also have this vertical coordinate u and, and other stuff. For instance, if f is operator of second order, which will be our main goal, um, uh, so, so, so like majority of examples will be for this, uh, then uh, the symbol in coordinates looks as follows. So here we differentiate by the two jets, right? And here's a double derivation operator. So that's linear operator of second order coefficient can, however, depends on jets, right? Because f is non-linear operator. So that, that you differentiate by, by two jet here, well, it still depends on, on the jets. Note that the summation by ILS equals to j, indeed, but we can also write it in standard form. So that's just di dj here, and that's unrestricted summation. And then you have to, well, do, to, 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 to split of diagonal uh, parts. Uh, if you think about metrics, right? That's just how, how you write metrics of bilinear form uh, well, into metric form. So, so coefficients of bilinear form still, if it's not with the squares and you have to divide it by, by two metric entries in, in the metric. It's kind of important for, for, for what happens next. It's uh, yeah, it's a small thing, but uh, important to remember. Now, um, uh, this symbol generalizes to, to system as well, of order L, and um, we may think about general setup as just like the system of PD is given as locus of a function F, so which goes from K plus L jets to K jets, right? That's that's a uh, of operator of order L. And uh, that's the uh, the operator on sections of new, and that's the values here, right? Uh, if, if it's just scalar operators and CSR and just scalar values, and you can take K equal to zero, so that will be the previous story. But then you can let K grow, so that corresponds to prolongation. And then you, as locus of this operator, of prolonged operator, you will get infinitely prolonged equation. Now, if it applies the previous idea to, to, to this map, then symbol will be what? Then symbol will be, again, homogeneous degree L polynomial one pulled up cotangent bundle, but now with values. And he'll take values in homomorphisms from uh, uh, V to W from this vector bundle. 
we can think for simplicity is vector. Of course, there are more general situations, but then there is more, more formalism. Okay, so and now the important notion is characteristic variety. So characteristic variety of uh, this equation is defined as follows. So um, knowing, uh, uh, well, something that, uh, well, that's, that's a plot, uh, a point of projectivized cotangent bundle is characteristic if uh, sigma f of theta is not injective. Okay, so, so, so sigma f of theta, uh, that's element of home, right? Because it's homogeneous polynomial, now I substituted this polynomial, well, evaluated it on theta. And so actually uh, it has to take value in here. Okay. Of course, if uh, V and W have the same rank, then being non-adjective is the same as being not surjective. And so you can also tell this. And actually it was equal rank is just mean determinant equal to zero. So you can write it in a simple way. But otherwise, uh, sigma f theta corresponds to certain matrix, and you just claim that the rank is not uh, maximum. Okay, so, um, uh, well, sometimes people say the determinant system is, is operator such that V and W have the same rank. So, so it acts from sections of one bundle to sections of the other bundle uh, of the same rank. Uh, and that's naive definition sometimes work. But we already saw in previous examples that whenever you rewrite system, like second and the right is first order, then sometimes you get more, can get more equations. They come from compatibility. And so like from this naive viewpoint, it's not determined even though it is. So proper definition actually of um, uh, a determinant system is that characteristic variety has core dimension one. Okay, now, um, if you have a solution, so, so so it's convenient to think about it as actually graph map from M uh, to R, right? And uh, then you can actually leave this to 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 jet, and so uh, you can identify base M with this J that leaves through U. I forgot here U infinity U of M. Then it will be submanifold in M, which of, in, in in infinity, which of course is projected to M. But it's useful. To, to, to think of this uh, solution as based together this function. Okay. Now, then, uh, if, if, if you have this notation, then the characteristic variety is just a bundle over, uh, of the solution uh, whose fiber at the point X, um, well, is the following. So that characteristic variety uh, on uh, the solution you add the point X that consists of all theta such that well, in this case, I consider scale of case. So, so I can just put the simple equation like this. Right. So the scalar case, this is translate to a uh, polynomial equation. Okay, so in coordinates to compute statistic variety, um, one does the following. So one um, linearizes the, the system, takes symbol, highest terms, and then do something like Fourier transform. So basically, you just change differentiations to multiplications. Instead of writing bi, we write ti. Uh, so, um, and um, of course, those things without coefficients, they're commuting, and ti are just always commuting. Okay, so, so it's, what you do, you here is frozen. So, so in here, instead of uh, iterated der derivative, you take iterated power. So that's the homogeneous polynomial of degree M, what we've been talking about. Okay, so here P is actually coordinate on the on the fiber of cotangent space, right? So 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 M is d dimensional, so for decomposition by components is p one to p d, and p power alpha is well, uh, if alpha is multi index, so so it's this product of all the corresponding degrees. Uh, <clears throat> So specifically for second order PDs, the characteristic variety is a field of quadrix, right? Because it's given by quadratic polynomial. And for us, it will be important to assume uh, that it is non-degenerate. So we will study uh, uh, non-degenerate uh, uh, characteristic varieties. Uh, and um, uh, then they, 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 they uh, carry some conventional geometry. We also uh, assume it's hyperbolic, uh, which will mean which means nothing if you walk over C, 
but if you'd like to, to, to do real stories, so uh, it should mean that we kind of grasp the entire complex story with this. So non-degeneracy, of course, means that whenever we write metrics of bilinear forms in my HA as before, then the determinant is non zero. Uh, and uh, well, hyperbolicity means that whenever you complexify variety, you, you get uh, the same as you complexify the corresponding ideal. So the correspondence between variety and your faults. Like uh, uh, in application with metrics, with conformal metrics, we have the following. So whenever the determinant is non-zero, we can reverse the metrics. So instead of sigma ij, I take inverse metric and I get metric g ij. So in fact, that's sigma matrix of symbol is just um, rank to matrix with upper indices. Right, and this is rank to um, uh, uh, symmetric rank to tensor with lower indices, which corresponds to metric. Okay, so we will get we will get some metric. Yeah. And this other condition hyperbolic in three D it will mean that the uh, the uh, that's Laurentian uh, metric, because if you talk about um, Riemannian metric, well then the Hurtis variety is just empty, right? So so we will not see anything when we do complexification. Um, and in, in the case of 4D, we actually assume neutral signal. We'll clear why, why later. And I also will explain why higher dimensions do not um, do not arise here. Okay. Now, um, in fact, we don't have metric because why? Because um, we have equation, right? Not differential operator F, but actually it's locus, that's PD. So we are free to change differential operator, uh, which which gives the same locus, right? In particular, like you have arbitrarily scaled, and when you scale uh, f, then of course you also, also scaled gf. So uh, you instead have conformal structure. And on solution of epsilon uh, of e, that, that's that's actually canonical conformal structure, and that's uh, the most important geometric structure for the uh, applications to well geometric approach to integrability. Okay, now um, sometimes there are multiple characteristics and I would like to show it on examples. Uh, so first of all, uh, the, what I said before, of course, generalize two systems. Uh, I'd like to sh show you how it works on example. Here's an example which we already looked. That's Monokov Centenary Systems and that's master equation for einstein wild geometry. I don't show now the entire einstein wild geometry, but I will just show how conformal structure arises. So here is a system. It's Couple equation of second order on two functions u and v, which depends on uh, x, y, and t. So p is operator of second order, right? But you see, it's it's uh, um, it has coefficients which depends on functions u and v actually on their first terms. So it's not linear operator, right? It's called c linear operator. So it's written in in total derivative. So it's actually like horizontal operator, but but the coefficients well actually functions on terms. And then we apply it well to function u and function v. So that's second order in the left hand side, uh, right? And well, there's zero here, there's no zero here, but um, yeah, it, it's lower order, it's order one. Okay. So that's Monaco Santini system. And I would like to compute now its symbol. So symbol is going to be homomorphism from rank to bundle to rank to bundle. So I expect to get m um, two times two metrics. But it's actually very simple. So first of all, symbol of operator P. So it frees all the all the derivatives. So this guys will be frozen. And I just see now um, commuting things, right? Uh, del X, del Y, and del T. And I do this Fourier transform. So, so here will be PX instead of del X, PT instead of del T and so forth. So, so that symbol of uh, operator P evaluated on covector P. Okay, now when I look to this, that's my first equation. My first equation actually is going to span the entire first row of the matrix because you see the symbol of something like this operator, this operator applied to u and v, and u and v are column. And so this thing is something applied to u, and here it is that's p of u in the first equation, right? So, so p we already computed the symbols here, it is. but there's nothing of second order in the first equation which is applied to v. So that's why it is a zero. And very similar from this one, I see that I get zero for the U part and I get this one for the V part. Okay, so that's actually a very simple metric, the diagonal. 
And so rent drop when this polynomial is equal to zero. And you see actually that's like multiplicity, right? So that we get that for twistic variety is given by quadric, this one, but it's actually multiple, multiplicity. Uh, we disregard this multiplicity. It's an important thing for us that we have quadric. So then you do as before, you compute uh, that that's actually quadric on uh, T star, right? On cotangent. We would like to see quadric in T. So we, we, we have to compute duality. So you compute matrix, you invert it, and then you have uh, the corresponding conformal structure. So here is the matrix. This is the one which we have showed uh, previously when I discussed um, that this system is master system. Even call a fine well structure. Uh, of course, the metric itself doesn't completely determine the Einstein well structure. Uh, I will come to this later. Let me also talk about 4D because I also showed master equation for self duality equation. That's what we derived with the uh, nice and Ferrocontor. And here it is. So it involves some operator Q of second order. Okay, something similar to what we see in 3D. But now, um, uh, we also have two functions u and v, but they depend on four variables, x, y, z, and w. Okay, the equations themselves are the pair, but equations are of the sort of the right. So q have second order, and then we apply more derivatives from the left. Okay, in particular, that's non-constant coefficients. You have to differentiate them as well. So if you do this, that's that's low order. So now you look to Top symbol, right? You freeze all coefficients and you look to highest degree uh, 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 differentiations, which will be sort of. So, what are they? Again, first of all, let's compute the symbol of Q. So, here it is. That's very simple. You just change partial differentiation to multiplication by Q. Okay, that's quadratic polynomial. It involves uh, one jet of U and V, indeed, at coefficients. Okay, and now let's look at the first equation that has to spend the first row of matrix. So for you, that's here's the rate of third order, dx q. So correspondingly here it will be multiplication px and sigma q. Okay, and for v it is will be minus py sigma q. That's all. right. Then I look to the second equation and do very similar story. First, see what is applied to you. Of course, there's also derivative of you here, but they are lower order, right? I just concentrate on the top order to get some, and top order appears only in here. And this gives me this entry of the matrix, and this gives me this entry of the matrix. And then I get this two times two matrix, and it drops in rank precisely when sigma qp is equal to zero. Right? Okay, you see some other things, but actually, if you take uh, away from the matrix sigma qp, because it uh, enters every entry, then you get matrix for which determinant is again sigma qp. So it appears three times actually. When you compute the determinant, it will be sigma qp. QP cube. That's why multiplicity is three. Okay, but anyway, so this equality is quadric, right? And it's non degenerate. Uh, it's a neutral signature. Uh, and when, when you uh, invert it, you get this um, kind of Levansky Robertson type um, uh, conformal structure. Okay, so that's how we get conformal structure. We just read it off from the equation. So that's very algorithmic. The only thing we need, we need non degeneracy. Okay. So now I'd like to say uh, what is the special flux pair. I already said it before, but now when we discussed um, correspondence space and other stuff, I would like to revisit it and say it most abstractly and most general. So dispersion of flux pair of order n is, first of all, a bundle correspondence space. So m hat over m. So, and this M is uh, equipped with U with, with, with a solution. Okay, so, so it, it's a uh, dispersion slug pair for, for equation, right? And the U is solution to equation. Of course, I don't need to solve the equation. I just need to find a jet of U. So it's purely algebraic story. Whose fibers are connected curves, right? Some people would like to think here complex and uh, very often these are just rational fibers. Um, okay, so that's P1. Uh, if you want, you think CP1, but um, if you'd like to, to do real, it's more complicated story. At least these fibers are always sort of complex, right? Even though the base can be sort of real. Together with rank two distribution, 
okay? And that's sub-distribution of tangent, well, sub-bundle of the tangent bundle to the correspondent space. Such that, first of all, um, this pi hat depends only on finite jet, namely on n jet of solution, okay? And this axis point of m. Uh, and it is transversal, transversal to the fibers. Okay, so at every point you can send it down. However, it's not in general projective. And that's actually important that it's not projective. So you can vary point x hat over x and project down pi to the point x. And then you get two plane congruence. In other words, uh, you have one parametric family of two planes inside tangent planes to m. Okay, and they are parameterized by what is called spectral parameter. Spectral parameter is fiber on this bundle. Okay, whenever it's P1, it's, it's, it's projective uh, coordinate. Yeah. Now, two lux pairs are called equivalent if uh, for any solution, uh, uh, they actually equal, right? So, so on jets, uh, as, as distributions on jets, when U is unrestricted, they actually may be different. But when U is restric restricted, that was what, what physicists call on shell, then actually they, this, this planes have to consider. And um, we call finally Pasha dispersional class pair. If for any lux pair, which is equivalent to this one, the Frobenius integrability condition, okay, that this uh, I think is distribution, uh, integral distribution, is a non trivial differential corollary of system E. Of our PD system. And the important word here is non trivial. Okay, so maybe like it will be a corollary, but then you change a bit uh, off shell your, your uh, lock pair and become trivial. Then it's, then it's not. Then it's not. not, not, not the lock pair. It cannot be used for integrating. Okay, our first claim, and uh, that's from the work with David Calderbank, is the following. It's a very general claim. So here we don't need to assume uh, that equation of second order or that the characteristic variety is quadratic, nothing, very general state. So suppose some system E has dispersion loss lux pair, pi hat. Um, uh, well, actually it's if and only if statement. So, so pi hat is dispersion loss lux pair, um, no, sorry. So if you have a uh, dispersional slug pair pi hat for, for system E, then it is a uh, characteristic. And here's what it means. So we take a uh, solution or jet of solution, we take point in correspondent space, and then we, we, we take the, the corresponding plane, right? So in fact, it is a plane downstairs, right? Because it's projection of the plane. So it's plane in, uh, in uh, tangent to M. But we have the whole congruence of such. So, so in order to find one of those one-dimensional family, we have we need the point x here, not just point x. Okay. So then we take this two plane and consider covector we can engulate. Okay, that's the covector. Then characteristic property means that this covector is characteristic, that it lives in characteristic variety. Okay, so in other words, once again, so uh, if something is the dispersional flux pair, any covector which manipulates it is characteristic. So we know something from lux pairs for a priori from equation. So if you, if, if, if you would like to, to test integrability, if you look, would like to look for the dispersional flux pair, then of course we look to characteristic variety of, of the system and then we can start working with this. Okay. Now, <clears throat> And then we talk about second order equation. So I, I, I went here at once from um, uh, from uh, general statement, that's general statement. But if we talk about second order equation, what does it mean actually? Uh, it means that if you have this conformal structure here, if you have non-degeneracy second order, so if you have this conformal structure here, then it means that pi is quasi-tropic to plane. Right? So if you take it unigulated, we get isotropic. That is precisely this, or in other words, that's, that plane is uh, quasi-tropic, and that gives a restriction. 
because for conformal structure, for non-degenerate metric, coisotropic plane can exist at more than dimension four, right? Uh, yeah, so, so, so because it's two plane, right? So lux pair, pair is something generated by two things, so, so, so two, two plane can be coisotropic uh, uh, at most when, when dimension is at most four. And also, also it restricts, of course, uh, in real case, uh, huge. So for d equal to two, that condition is vacuous. Uh, that's only somehow restrict uh, singularity, but let's not talk about it. For d equal to three, uh, if you consider coisotropic two planes, um, uh, then it means actually degenerate planes, plane for which restriction of conformal structure is degenerate, right? And these form uh, uh, line, rational um, uh, uh, line, so P1. Okay, so at each point X. So that's precisely the congruence of plane. For D equal to four, we actually have two rational lines, two different P1s. And uh, so these planes, well, they're called alpha and beta. Uh, so, so two planes belonging to one are called alpha, two the other belonging to called beta, and they can be swapped if you change orientation. Now, um, so how does it look like? So, so all of this. So, so, so here is two plane congruence. So that's thing downstairs. That's rank. So that's not really a distribution, right? So, so pi is congruence. It depends on additional parameter lambda. And for every lambda, it's actually two plane, two dimensional subspace of tangent space, so span by two vectors. But this vector not only depends on the point of M, but also on some additional parameter lambda, which comes from configuration space. And now we would like to leave the six downstairs. We would like to leave upstairs to get pi hat. So, so since it's project to this pi, so it has to have the forms of x still downstairs, depending on lambda, plus something, some coefficient times del lambda. That's vertical depth, tension to fiber, and similar with y. Okay, so the resulting rank to distribution has to be integrable mode equation, which which called on shell but actually not identically of shell. So it has to be non-trivial corollary of, of the PD system. Now, so when we, when we actually look to this, um, uh, so let me just discuss, uh, so, so what do we want here? So we would like on shell that we have um, for Binion's conditions. So when we compute, com compute X hat and Y hat on M hat, then actually they express through X hat and Y hat. So, for example, for um, d equal to four, right? So, so base is four dimensional, uh, correspondence space is five dimensional. So uh, rank to distribution, the normal is three dimensional. So whenever we compute and project to normal, so we get three components. So whenever I compute this, right? That will be three scalar conditions. And only in one of them, there will be differentiations of M and N in two others. M and N will enter algebraically. So you have two unknowns, M and N, and you have two algebraic constraints on them. So you can actually algebraic found, find the lift. If you do the same counting for three dimensions, then you actually see that you are able to obtain one relation for M and N, but algebraically you are not able to obtain N and N. M and N. There'll be two conditions, only one algebraic, Second differential, you have to somehow integrate it. And of course, usually integrating is not trivial property. It's not trivial task. Okay, so here you see some difference between three and four, and we will not look to bigger dimensions because of this statement. Now, second crucial ingredient is so-called normality. So let's let's see. So uh, in the correspondence space I'm had, right, we have rank to distribution. So, so, so everything depends on you, right? So, so you can be solution. Uh, then it's on shell or can be just general um, functions and so on. So we have rank two distribution. What happens if you compute derived? Derived is rank three, right? Well, if it's not, if it's general, like no, not for these integrables, then it's rank three. So basically, we have is generated by x hat, y hat, as previous generators of y hat, plus something more. Okay, and normality condition is the third vector you can choose vertically. Okay, that, that it's del lambda. And you can always actually uh, achieve this. 
Okay, so that's uh, uh, so by doing modification uh, of shell, you can actually so which means that uh, d pi hat is actually projectable. So pi hat is not projectable, but by d pi hat is projectable to pi. Um, okay, that in in this case, the only integrability condition will be uh, vanishing of the vertical direction for commutator. So you take computer x hat and y hat, and the only non-trivial component of this Frobenius condition is equal to zero, a uh, mod pi hat, uh, will be the vertical one. Okay, and this becomes essential for dimension three. Okay, here, here's second uh, crucial claim. When d equal to three and pi is a non-degenerate quadratic two-plane congruence on this correspondence um, uh, phase bundle, and then while connections parameterize normal lift pi to pi hat. Um, such that the del lambda coefficient of lambda independent factor field V lift is quadratic in lambda. That's what we call projective property. Okay, that's very restrictive property, and actually that's maybe more com technical complicated uh, statement. But um, ideologically, it tells that actually there's only one uh, last pair still. So you, you had a lot of freedom before, but if you impose this property, it's actually shrinks. So the normality property and this projective property, then actually uh, module equivalence, it's, it's only one. Right, that's for d equal to three. For d equal to four, as I explained before, we don't need anything. We don't need any additional ingredients. So here's ingredients as well connection. A choice of all connection for dimension four, we get a uh, lift for free. Okay, and finally, here, here is the, um, the uh, main theorem of uh, uh, work with David Calderman that's equivalent of different approaches to integrability. So, if you have a PDE uh, such that its characteristic variety is non degenerate quadratic. Um, uh, and well, uh, we assume at once that it's 3D or 4D but, but by previous reasons. Um, uh, denote by CF the corresponding conformal structure. Uh, then the integrability of, of uh, equation uh, through non degenerate dispersion slug pair is equivalent to Einstein well property for this conformal structure on any solution of PD, or cell duality property for this conformal structure on any solution of PD. And um, like in solitonic equations, actually finding lux pair is certain integrability process. So definitely not algorithmic. Uh, this theorem tells us actually, actually it's completely algorithmic. So what you have to do, you have to compute the conformal structure, which is algorithmic, and then check this property, which is algorithmic, and everything like mod PD on every solution, that's again algorithmic. You don't need to solve equation for this because you, you, you'd like to check that it's Differential corollary of the equation. Let me sketch the problem. So one side. Suppose we, give, we have a DLP, then it must be characteristic by the first claim. Then we use this to construct the correspondence space M hat. So namely, we take pi hat to be one of those uh, rational lines, pi one. Okay, we can consider uh, poisotropic um, planes. Well, it, it, the, let's call them just null planes in 3D or in 4D, right? They're defined on shell, but actually if you function U, it still will be non-degenerate. So, 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 so there was some determinant equal non-zero. So of course, if you just take consider general, go from on shell a bit outside of the equation, the non-degeneracy will be will hold and actually it will hold for the risky open set of data. So you have conformal structure almost everywhere and you can expand the formula for, for lux pair uh, of shell. Now, um, this uh, on shell of the mode equation, this have a foliation, right? Because you have integrability condition because it's DLP. And so uh, this correspondence space, which has dimension D plus one, has a rank to foliation. Okay, so, so uh, it's, if you do local quotient, we get D minus one dimensional space. So each fiber is actually null totally geodesic with respect to conformal structure. So we have 
the minus one parametric family of null total geodesic uh, surfaces, so manifolds. And now by Cartan theorem for d equal to three or Penrose theorem for d equal to four, this is actually equivalent to Einstein while or self duality properties. So this side is done. Converse, suppose uh, the con canonical conformal structure uh, enjoys the property Einstein values of duality, then introduces a uh, correspondence uh, space bundle, right, uh, through null planes, or, uh, well, in for d equal to four, we have to choose alpha or beta. Um, uh, then uh, normal property uh, with projective property uh, are objective with while connections for d equal to three. So we actually have a lift. For d equal to four, the normal lift is unique. And this gives us lift of uh, two plane congruence on the base to actually dispersion loss lex pair in correspondence space. And that's it. Okay. So, um, so here's like, um, uh, let me just again briefly tell something about this. So, so here in 4D, everything is very, very simple because we just use conformal structure, right? So, so you compute conformal structure, you go, you compute wild tensor, take half of it, uh, either self-dual part or anti-self-dual part and check it is, uh, it vanishes uh, due to system. Actually, a priori, you don't know which part you have to take because there's usually things in PDs are local and Locally, there's no, you don't see what is, what is orientation. So maybe self dual anti self, you, you, you don't know a priori. So it should be half conformally flat. That's what you can check. Uh, with in 3D station, it's a bit more complicated because conformal structure doesn't specify unstyled while, right? You need while connection, choice of while connection, which can be given through a, a, a choice of one form module of the gauge change. Okay, so how these things are common. Okay, so first of all, let me assume that we have actually wild connection. Let's we discuss what, what this, this normal lift is, so how to do it. So if we have this wild potential omega, so how, how, how to get this dispersion of last pair. So um, we already discussed like, well, of course, that, uh, when we fix conformal representative metric, uh, then a choice of, uh, well, then, then wild connection is equivalent to choice of one four. Okay, so, uh, so I suppose we have this one for, right? Um, uh, then, um, well, first of all, like, of course, if, if there is uh, this, this I kind of representation integrable and we, we can find dispersion slug pair. So, so how, how we do it? The, the statement that it can be done explicitly or algebraically, well, when we say algebraically, we actually mean there's no integration involved, right? So. Uh, it's not something like you have only powers. They can be more complicated operation like cosinus or exponentiation, but you just operate with, 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 with data without integration, right? So you may need even involve inverse, inverse function theory at some point in, in arguments, right? Uh, like like oh, I'm just saying polynomial system has some solution for which you don't want to write complicated expression. Okay, so. How to write this lift? We have conformal structure. Let's take a Nalco frame. So Nalco frame in 3D means this. So well, it's Lorentzian. So so something like this. So well, we fix coefficient to be four and minus one. Actually, for matrices, it will be two, two, minus one, and zeros in other places. Okay. So 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 uh, skew diagonal these entries two minus one. Okay. So that's uh, of course that's not unique, right? Uh, in addition, also, of course, it also depends on finding jet of solution because it's done on every solution. Um, so, but anyway, so let's choose some. Uh, it's easy to do as, as algebraic uh, data. Yeah. So uh, now let's have dual, dual coffering. And let's see IJKB structure functions. I can discuss it, d d d define it through, through frame or through coframe, doesn't matter. Uh, of course, this involves some differentiation. So in principle, these are functions on jets of order one higher than the coefficients of this local frame. And since this is read off from the conformal structure and conformal structure is read off from the equation itself, these are uh, order of equation plus one at most, maybe, maybe less for quasi-linear equations, for example. 
Okay, now the last pair is given by, by the following. So this x, you see it's lambda dependent. So V0, V1, and V2 are actually lambda independent, right? Because this conformal structure is just on the base, it's lambda independent. And these things are lambda independent. Okay, but now two planes actually has congruence, so, so there's lambda. So here is now two plane, V0 plus lambda V1, comma, V1 plus lambda V2. Okay, so if you restrict to this plane, the metric is the geometry. Okay, so that's quasi-tropical, we just say null plane, right? So that's X and that's Y, and that's a lift, plus M, the, the lambda plus N, the lambda. And here's the formula for M and N. As you see, they're completely algebraic. They are cubic, in the actual parameter lambda, but that's because, and I said this is the lift has to be projective property quadratic, but you see you actually leave a uh, vector field which is linear in lambda, right? So you may imagine this is lift quadratic and this is quadratic in lift, in lift times lambda, so mm -hmm. M has to be cubic in lambda. Okay, and the same for N. And you see it's cubic, right? And it contains those things, but also contains something from omega. Right, so so it contains connections. Connection helps to lift. Okay, so that's how we get a, a, a algorithmically um, flux. Now, but the question is how we get potential? How, how we get this actually wild potential? Is, is it at all possible? So let's discuss this. So uh, for Hirota type equation, so if you consider three D an equation of not general form, but uh, but such that it doesn't contain um, independent variables, x, y, t. So it doesn't contain function u, it doesn't contain first derivatives. It just contains two jets, so second derivatives only. Okay, so, so the bond relation between the second derivatives, that's called Hirota type something. So for those kinds of equation, um, um, the um, uh, this possibility to find the covector. Okay, so first of all, let me tell you that uh, in 3D, uh, if we claim interoperability, well, through hydrodynamic reductions or through dispersional slug pair for Hirota type, they prove to be integrable or so to be equivalent. Then, actually, modern pair property for this one that's non linear but controllable non linear, right? So, this comes from just determinants of Hessian for minus combination of minors of determinants of Hessian. So, at most cubic, right, in, in second derivative. Uh, that would be very restrictive. So if you have integrability and one pairs, then actually equations linearize. Uh, so, uh, so so what, what are general integrable equations? So so it was proved by Farah Pontov, Stendina and Clary later, also so that the equation is actually a modular form, so which means it's it has complicated transcendental solutions. So you don't have simple solution to this equation, right? But it is um, invariant with respect to nice semi-simple uh, group. Um, actually, group here is important. So algebra is not sufficient. So, so and there's, it's actually quoted uh, by, by discrete subgroup. So it's homogeneous, uh, but, but there's discrete subgroup. Okay. So, now, in this case, Einstein while structure has explicit form. I write background because it depends on the solution. Right? So, um, covector omega is given as follows. So, you see, we have the only metric the data here. So, we can compute omega just by conformal structure. In fact, for generic, generic uh, conformal structure, which allows um, Einstein while property. But the choice of while connection is unique. There's unique uh, choice of omega for, for, for choice of g. Uh, uh, so for some particular conformal structures, there are several choices, okay? But here the choice is unique and it, here's the formula in terms of metric. And you see the total derivative, so omega has uh, order one more than, than the equation itself. If you go to more general equation, which depends on, in, on the entire two jet, right? So also independent variables and so forth, then this formula is not applicable. So it's not contact in there, right? It's, it, it works fine with, with those equations and some other equations, but not in full generality. Yet the Einstein-Wall structure can be determined. 
here is a statement of recent work joint virtual contact and model. So if you consider non-degenerate, non-modular pair equation of second order, with the same well property, then while covector can be algebraically computed. So it's again certain algorithm how to do it. Formulas are involved. I cannot provide them here. Okay. Now uh, combination of this and previous slide gives the following. So under the above conditions, the dispersion of select pair is algebraically joined by equation itself. And that's something which is not true for solitonic or dispersive equations. Okay, usually the lux, to get lux pair or zero curvature representation for those, you need to do some kind of integration process. Okay, so, so here it's actually um, much more simple. You just extract it algebraically from geometry. Okay, and also let me give you, so, so that's kind of description of what happens in general um, with uh, Iterable equations in 3D. That, of course, not a classification. No, that's very far because there's some knowledge how they have to look, but basically it's very far. And 4D actually station is a bit more rich. So if you consider equations uh, in 4D, uh, then um, let's again consider special case of Hirota type. So if you consider Hirota type, so only a top derivative enters the equation. There are lots of such equations and applications. So it's actually a very, very rich class. So like Lebansky equation belongs to them. And yeah, so, so lots of interesting equations there. Um, and then integrability implies actually the monogen pair property, right? So in 3D, monogen pair is too restrictive. But in 4D, it's actually inevitable. So we proved it recently through some large computation jointly with Ferrapont and Novikov. So, and basically that's obtaining integrability conditions, which is huge differential ideals. And then we have monogen pair property in other, uh, bit more controllable uh, set of differential conditions. And then we derive that one in ideal is inside the last. So, so we have uh, implication. Okay. Um, uh, if we consider monogen pair integrable equations of Hirota type, and then actually such equations were classified by Dubov and Ferraponta uh, more than 10 years ago. The classifications over C, over R, the list is a bit longer. And then the list contains only six issues. They kind of Klebansky type equation, except for one, which is just linear. It's just a wave equation. And the other five kind of heavenly equations, and each of them can be obtained from one of them, uh, which contains one continuous parameter. So here's parameters alpha, beta, and gamma, and you see it's quadratic relation. That's actually mon pair. So um, uh, alpha plus beta plus gamma have to be zero. If alpha plus beta plus gamma is not zero, then actually that's not mon pair. So you can recheck that it's obtained from uh, two times two minors of Hessian, uh, of Hessian matrix, right? But if alpha plus beta plus gamma is not equal to one, then it cannot obtain from minors. And, and of course, you can also scale alpha and beta and gamma by the same quantity. So, so you have essentially one parameter, right? And then all other equations, Plibansky first, Plibansky second, modified Plibansky, Hussein, can be obtained by deformation. Uh, and that for Hirota type. Now, what happens for general? So if equation involve everything, uh, independent variables, values of u, uh, values of first derivatives uh, yeah, and second derivatives. So then um, we still have the same claim. So even in general case, self-duality property on every solution is the same as integrability. And this implies monge compared type. Okay, so it's always monge. However, this classification is no longer applicable and the classification is huge. So the only thing which we can say that if you freeze one bit, right, then we have Kirota type. But if you freeze it arbitrarily, then actually it will be one of those six equations. Okay, so that's certain restriction. In particular, it has to be quadratic in derivatives. Okay, it cannot be completely uh, general. Uh, one equation. Okay, so um, that's more or less a story about. Um, uh, dispersionless integrable equations. So 
So here are some references. Um, so here I cite a lot of uh, myself and uh, my collaborators. Um, and um, and uh, that's almost all. Um, as usual, let me give uh, one more slide of homework. Um, and um, I'd like to relate it to Cartan 235 and to N. So when we talk about D equal to 4K, right? So the solution is four dimensional manifold, right? And its correspondence space is five dimensional. What do we have? So um, first of all, recall that every two-play congruent has unique normal lift, right? So uh, um, then, uh, uh, but how 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 to get? So so what we do with this ball? So this is five space, right? And we take gray image of this congruent. So, um, so then we get ranked three distribution upstairs. So delta is rank three. Okay, so, so that can be done. That's, that's, that's not a big trouble. So, um, and uh, of shell is, well, there's no, uh, there's no um, restriction. Right? So it's just non-holomic rank three distribution and it has growth three to five. But uh, it's just dimension five is maximal, right? It's going to go three to six. And therefore, well, it's explained by Cartan in 1910, uh, this delta has square root. Okay, so there's rank to distribution pi hat. You just find it uh, algebraically. Okay, now we know that when we go from three, five to, to rank two distribution, then actually we have reg in regular situation, we have two different possibilities. So either is this rank two is integrable or it gives rise to two, three, five. And that's precisely what happens on shell and off shell. So on shell is integrable and off shell is going to be two, three, five. Okay. When we go to, uh, to, to D equal to three case, right? Solution is three dimensional manifold and um, uh, con con uh, uh, it corresponds space is four dimensional, right? So then when we uh, take pre-image, of two plane congruence and they get rank three distribution on form space. Okay, so so growth is three comma four. So that must have a uh, uh, Cauchy characteristic. Okay, so we get uh, rank one some bundle of this delta. Okay, uh, well, here, here's definition of Cauchy characteristic. And then if you're looking for this uh, distortional slug pair pi hat, um, then the normality condition is this one implies that Cauchy characteristic should be part of it. In other words, uh, when you look for generators of pi hat, one is no, that coming algebraic, that's actually Cauchy characteristic. The other one you don't know, and for this you actually need wild connection. Okay, so that's uh, interpretation in terms of logic, dimensional geometry, and then I stop here. Thanks for your attention. Questions? Um, I have a question. I think you did not uh, define, or maybe I didn't pay attention, the Mont Jean property when you were uh, referring to it. Can you make? Uh, yes, yes. So you don't define Mont Jean property. Uh, so, uh, well, it's, it's just one pair. So equation is one pair. So, so equation is one pair meaning means that you can write it as linear combinations of minors of Hessian matrix of U. So it's second order, right? And then, uh, and, and linear combinations. So, so the coefficients depends on everything of those jets. So it will be order zero, then comes linear terms, then comes certain quadratic terms, right? Coming as uh, two times two, uh, determinants of two times two minors of Hessian matrix and so forth. At most, uh, D time, uh, degree D, right? Um, and uh, well, but in fact, it's possible to say by F itself when it's one jumper. So, so um, we derived the closed system of uh, constraints, uh, differential ideal, which which tells you when when it is one jump. Um, yeah, so so so, so Monja pair property it's the same like equation B Monja pair type. 
And, and in, when you define this uh, vial connection for what you wrote a claim about vial connection and for uh, 3D equations, uh, I wanted to say how I think this is how this is how one can uh, figure out these coefficients m and n, right? When you write this like pair, right? Because you were saying that there's basically one degree of freedom, and this is this condition that you put. Uh, helps determine, uh, get rid of this algebraic ambiguity and uh, get a, get your PDE or? Uh... Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. So basically like you you kind of understand that whenever we have, so what what, what what's the point of this, right? So that's this uh, lambda, but lambda enumerates planes pi two downstairs, uh, this congruence uh, encodes them, right? And if you have conformal connections, web connections conformal, that's parallel transports, preserve conformal structures, therefore preserve null codes, and therefore somehow transforms the uh, the uh, null planes, and therefore it has to lift up, right? Because the fiber consists of those null planes. 